This video is to help you complete the worksheet Quantitative Analysis of Vitamin C by Acid-Base Titration. We will be analyzing the vitamin C content of three commercial vitamin C tablets. Vitamin C has the chemical name of ascorbic acid. This is the data sheet that we've prepared to use with this vitamin C ascorbic acid uh, laboratory exercise. The upper part of this worksheet is just determining the concentration of the titrant that we have prepared. And then the bottom half of the worksheet is using that concentration that you just found to determine how much vitamin C is in your three uh, uh, vitamin C tablets. This is potassium hydrogen phthalate. It is a chemical that's known to be very stable and it's a primary standard for preparing volumetric alkali solutions and its formula weight is 204.23 grams per mole. I am going to prepare three samples of potassium hydrogen phthalate to be titrated with our titrant. Our titrant is sodium hydroxide, about 0.1 molar. I need to weigh approximately six tenths of a gram of potassium hydrogen phthalate in each aliquot. That has approximately the same number of moles of acid as the ascorbic acid we're going to be titrating in each of our samples. There I have 0 0.588 grams for sample 1. 0 0.588 grams. Sample 2 of potassium hydrogen phthalate. Zero point five nine two grams. Zero point five nine two grams for sample two. And the final sample, 0 0.587 grams, 0 0.587 grams for number three. The next step is to start dissolving our vitamin C tablets so that they are ready when we get to them. It'll take them a few minutes to dissolve. I put a tablet in each flask and then we're going to add some distilled water. To each one. And we'll set those aside so that they can uh, dissolve while we're doing the other part of this uh, uh, titration. My burette has been rinsed and filled as we did in class. The liquid level is right at the zero mark at the top of the burette. And I've adjusted the burette in the stand so that I can freely move the flask around under the tip without damaging it. 
The indicator we're using this time is called phenolphthalein, and it will be clear at first, and the end point will be indicated as it turns pink. We want a very light pink at the end point. If I over add the uh, titrant to it, it will become a very intense pink, and we don't want to go that far. We want to catch it just when it's turning colors. A little bit of water in there to uh, help ensure that all the solids are on the bottom and dissolve the solids that are in there. The uh, potassium hydrogen phthalate is rather large crystals, so this titration can sometimes go rather slowly. I'm going to run in quite a bit of titrate here to start with, down to about oh, 24 or so. There's my intense pink. We don't want it to be that intense. That should fade right now as that solid dissolves. I still see quite a bit of solid in there. Okay, now more slowly. It should take about 30 milliliters if I have done my calculations correctly. Remember when we read the lab, that was our, our goal, is to use most of the burette. It's a 50 milliliter burette, so if I use 30 milliliters, we should be able to minimize the errors in reading the burette, both at the beginning and at the end point. And that targeting 30 mils gives me some room to work beyond that if in fact my sample is larger than what I had anticipated. I still see some solid in there that hasn't dissolved yet. And we are getting close. A little rinse down the sides. And the reading for sample one is 28, it's between 28 and 29, so 28.85 milliliters. The burette is refilled and reset for sample number two. I've already added some water to that sample. So there is my indicator, and we are ready to go. And that endpoint is 29.05 milliliters. And this is sample number three of the potassium hydrogen phthalate. And there's our endpoint. And the volume is 28.95 milliliters. 28.95 milliliters. 
And so there's the data so far on this worksheet. The molar mass of potassium hydrogen phthalate was 204.22 grams per mole. For the first sample A, it asked for the volume in liters, so I moved the decimal. 0 0.02885 liters. For sample 2, 0 0.02905 liters. 0 0.02 895 liters and the masses of the first three samples were 0 0.588 grams, 0 0.592 grams, and 0 0.587 grams. Okay, these tablets have been sitting for 15-20 oh, minutes or so. and I have a glass rod I'm going to use to help each of them break up and further uh, dissolve the ascorbic acid out of them. The uh, tablets themselves have a lot of stuff in them, binders and stuff, that does not dissolve. So there will be solid left in the flask uh, from the tablets, even though all the ascorbic acid has been released from the tablets. So I'm just going to continue to break these up. So I think we're just about broken up here and ready to go with these tablets. I still have some solid material in there, but I believe it's the binders and stuff. It looks like the uh, bulk of the tablet is all broke up and it's been soaking in that water there. So I think it is safe to say that the ascorbic acid has been released from those tablets. So the burette has been refilled with the same titrant from the same bottle that we just used to titrate the potassium hydrogen phthalate. Now we have the first of the three vitamin C tablets. The bottle says all of the tablets have the same amount of vitamin C in them. So it should not matter in what order we do this titration. I'm going to quickly add about 25 mils and see that that color faded quite quickly. When I set up for this lab I grab vitamin C tablets that don't already have the orange dye in them so that it's not a uh, interference with our indicator. And there is our end point. I've been sliding this burette up in the burette clamp so that the reading is approximately level with the eye of the camera. So the reading is 32.1 milliliters. 32.1 milliliters. This is the second tablet. And for the second tablet, we have 33.0 milliliters. And this is the third tablet. And that is at 32.4 milliliters, 32.4.
And I want to run some more in just to see if the color does get darker. Yes, it does. So I did find the end point there. And here is the second half of that completed worksheet. In your packet it says that the molar mass of the ascorbic acid is 176.14 grams per mole. Here's the equation for the reaction. And for tablet 1, 2, and 3 we had 0 0.0321 liters. 0 0.0330 liters and 0.0324 liters. To complete the top part of this worksheet where we have our masses, our volumes, and our molar mass of potassium hydrogen phthalate, right here it says the calculations equal the mass of the KHP, so that's this number, write it right there, divided by the molar mass of KHP, so divided by the molar mass, write that here, and that number divided by, again, the volume of NOH, or of sodium hydroxide titrant, in liters. So this number here is last. So this number divided by this number, divided by this number, work the math right there, show your result at the end, do that three times for each data set. Add the three together at the end and divide by three. Put your answer there. So you're going to end up with an average concentration for your sodium hydroxide and that number we're going to need in the next set of calculations. It says the mass of ascorbic acid in each tablet equals the volume of titrant used, here it is right here, times the average concentration, that's your number right here you just calculated, times the molar mass of ascorbic acid, and that's written down right here. This number times this number times this number, work that out here, put your answer at the end. Once you've done that three times with the three data sets, find an average of those three masses and write it there and that is the mass of ascorbic acid on average that is in each of these vitamin C tablets. Okay without showing you all the calculations I did all the calculations and my result was an average mass of 0 0.570 grams of ascorbic acid in each tablet. I hope your calculations come up with the same result.